In this video, I'm looking at how to install SAS without the command line, and we're going to look at two different ways to do it. I think it's important to learn the command line, and it's a really useful thing as a front end dev. But if you're just getting into SAS or some other stuff, sometimes the command line can seem really intimidating when you start getting into JSON files that you have to configure in other languages that maybe you're not really comfortable with. So uh, if you're here, I'm assuming you want to learn SAS, but you're a little bit confused by that stuff. So we're going to look at some other ways that we can do it. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And I'm a really big fan of SAS. I use SAS in my own projects all the time. I've been using it for years now. I know for me when I first started, one of the things that confused me the most was the command line, and I quickly got away from that. Since then, I've gotten into the command line and I love it, and there's cool stuff and configurations you can do there, but it's not a must-have, and you don't have to use it to start using SAS or doing a lot of other cool stuff. So well, I'm going to look just at SAS and this. Some of the apps I'm going to look at at the end of the video, they're really good at just replacing the command line completely. So that's something you really don't want to worry about now, but you want to get cool things like image optimization and Babel and a whole bunch of other stuff without the setup of JSON files and other stuff like that. Uh, those options do exist out there. Uh, so first we're going to look at how we can do it in an extension using VS Code. And I'm going to look a little bit at the setup of that extension as well, because it's not uh, properly configured, let's say, in the VS Code setup, if you're not used to it, can seem a little bit intimidating, even though it's super easy to use. So we're going to check that out. And then after that, we're going to look at three different apps you can use. Uh, one of them is completely free, just like the VS Code extension, and other ones have trial modes or full, um, they do have a paid version that you can check out as well. So we want to install SAS, and I'm going to be doing it here in VS Code. Now I'm doing it in VS Code because that's the text editor I use, and it's also the simplest one to have an extension for, just because you don't have to uh, install anything else. Whereas I have linked to Adam and Sublime ones down at the bottom, um, down in the description below, and those ones have dependencies on them. So if you're using Sublime, you're going to have to get Ruby set up, and if you're using Adam, you'll have to get Node.js and Node SAS installed. It's not difficult to do, but it is a couple extra steps. So if if you are using VS Code like me, you can just come and click on this little thing right here, which is extensions. And it's going to load in all your existing ones as well as a recommended. And I'm going to make this bigger just so we can look at it. And we'll zoom in on this too. Uh, so you can see everything I currently have installed and some recommended ones over there. And I'm going to ignore all that and just come up here and write in live SAS because I forget what exactly it's called, but I know those two words are in it. And there we go. Live SAS compiler comes right at the top. And I have a little option to install right away. Before I do that, I'm just going to click really quick here just so we can see uh, a little bit more information on it. So uh, cool things with it is, well, it compiles SAS or a CSS files to CSS files in real time with live browser reload support. So that's really cool to have as well. Um, it's really easy, so we're going to see how it works in a second. It has a whole bunch of options for the exported CSS, like expanded, compact, compressed, and nested and uh, stuff like that. So really cool. The one is it does have a dependency on live server. Uh, that's for the live reload. So when you install this, it will automatically install the live server extension at the same time. It also does have auto prefix support, which is really handy and really cool. So all I have to do is click install here or here and then wait for it to install. Um, you do have to click reload, whether again, it's here or here, which is just going to reload or sort of relaunch um, SAS VS code. So let's click on that. Your screen sort of goes blank for a second as VS Code reboots. And now everything is good to go. You're, you're working and you can use some SAS. And to see if it's actually working, because you do have to fire it up once um, your things are uh, working and everything, what we'll do is I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to make a new folder called SCSS. And I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to call it main.scss. So here in my main.scss, what I'm going to do is just make a really quick uh, test where I'm going to write body. And if you watch my previous video where we looked at SAS, you'll know if you're doing SCSS, uh, regular CSS, you already know, is valid. So in here, I'm going to write background of red. And I'm going to hit save, and nothing happened. So once you've installed the live SAS compiler extension, what happens is down here at the bottom, you get a watch SAS and a go live option. So if I click on watch SAS, now it's watching my SAS, it pumps out the output and you can see it actually generated a main.css file. Um, it tells me what it's doing here. So if you don't want this open, you can close it. It won't reopen it every time you save, but if you get a warning or an error, it will pop this open. 
So I'm going to close that down for a second. And um, you'll notice though, there's one small problem in my opinion is that the CSS file gets generated in the same place that you had your SCSS file. So let's go and see how we can set that up because it's actually really easy to do. You wanna go into your preferences. Uh, so in VS Code that's under here, you can go to file preferences and settings or you can just use control comma. So if we go into there, you get your settings. We can go into my extensions and we can find live SAS compile configuration. And what the one thing I do want to do here is I want to change um, this part here where it says live SAS compile settings and the formats because we can change the CSS styles, but we can also change the save location, which is what I'm going to look at for this video. So I can go to edit in settings.json and that opens up this scary menu. So if you're not used to editing your VS code settings, uh, it's just a JSON file. So we have our live SAS compile format here and it's the save path that I want to change for the moment. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna copy it, so we can just copy. And you can come literally anywhere on this side between uh, these brackets here. They're, mine are yellow because of another extension I'm using, but uh, you'll just have, as long as you're inside of those, you can come all the way down to the bottom and paste it in. And you can come and change the save path here. So for the save path, I'm just gonna delete null and I'm going to put in quotation marks and we're going to do forward slash CSS. So it's going to go back to the root and make a CSS folder. So let's save that. I'm going to push, I'm just going to save that file and I'm going to come back to this and let's just change this to green and hit save. And even though I'd never manually created a CSS folder, it created one by itself now and it saved my CSS file into there automatically. So it's not, I can come and delete these two now and anytime I make a change, so we have green, and let's just come up here and say color is white and hit save. And if I come click in here, you can see that my actual CSS file is getting those to render. And if you really want to test if things are working, you can create a variable. Let's call it color is red. And I can change this to color. And if I come back to my main CSS file, I should see that the color has become red just like my variable is up here. So I know everything is working. If ever you get an error or anything, you can push control and back tick. That's the one above tab and next to your number one uh, to get back to your terminal and go to your output and you'll get information here. And if ever you make a mistake on something, let's just close this to show you and you hit save, it's automatically gonna pop up and tell you what your error is here. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, so that's how we can install it and sort of set it up using VS Code. There are a few other settings you might want to look at, such as the uh, format and maybe you want like .min.css if you're going with um, a minified format or something like that. And again, don't change things on this side. You copy from this side and you put them on this side. Our other options that are right here are um, I'm going to look at three different ones and there's apps you can download. So the first one is 100% free and it's Koala. So this is focused on, it does not only SaaS, so there is also less Compass and CoffeeScript support. So if you want that, it is a free app. I've never used it, but I've heard really good things about it. You have the same compile options, real-time compilation, cross-platform, error notification, etc., etc. So uh, really good uh, for all of that. There is documentation and I know a lot of people who use it, so I know it works well it hasn't been updated in a while though so just a little word of warning on that but it is free to use so if you're just getting started it might be perfect for what you need um, a really popular one is CodeKit so CodeKit is super popular yeah, it works really well it's only for Mac though so if you're on a PC you can't do it now it is a purchase so you have to you can get a trial version or you can buy the full version for $34 um, the nice thing with CodeKit is it has a lot more languages, so it's not limited to just the four. You can also get into things like Hamel and Pug and uh, Markdown, and you can see there's a lot more support for other stuff. It's really easy to set up and do stuff with. Um, it has the browser support, um, the browser sync options, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, really, really handy um, and cool tool. And the one I've used in the past, I have videos where I am using this, is Prepros. The reason I use it is it's on a PC. It's also a little bit cheaper than CodeKit, so it's up to you which one you want. It's also on Linux, too, so if you're not on Mac, this could be a really good option. The free trial, I believe, is infinite. It just pops up every now and then to let you know that you're on the free trial. It's like every 10 minutes or something. 
uh, so that can get annoying. I have the pro version. It works super good. Again, it supports lots of uh, different languages. You have Babel in there if you're writing some JavaScript. Um, and yeah, it works really well. You have your browser sync, code minification. Um, it's a little more than what we just looked at. It has Im image optimization, file minification, concatenation. Um, a lot of things you might be doing with the command line, you can do with either CodeKit or with Prepros. Um, as opposed to Koala, which is a bit more limited, or with the extension that I looked at, you might be able to get more extensions that can cover more of what all these are doing. But it's nice having one app that sort of just runs in the background. Um, and takes care of everything for you. So there you have it. That's different ways you can get up and running with SaaS today now without uh, a lot of headache or just anything like that. As I did say at the beginning though, it is important maybe at one point to learn the command line or to get into the command line, but I don't think you should have to learn that to start using things like SaaS or things like Babel or whatever else it is you might wanna be integrating into your workflow. Um, in the long run, it's really cool. It's a lot of setup you can do with zero cost. So that's always a bonus, but you do have to learn how to set these things up. And I just think that in the short run, you know, it's, there's no harm in putting that off while you focus on adding one new language to it. And then later on, you can get around to that stuff. I think that's totally cool to do. Um, that's the path I did anyway. So <laughs> of course I think it's cool. Um, but also I'm partially making this video Hey, we're going to have a, a few of them because I want to get people into SaaS. I think SaaS is amazing and I want to get more and more people into SaaS and using SaaS and understanding SaaS. And because of that, I've also made a course on it. So you can obviously stick around here to see the videos that I will be making. But this week is the end of the pre-registration period for my course on it. And once that's done, the price of the course will be going up. So on February 1st, the course officially launches and the price jumps a bit. If you don't know about my course yet, it is on SaaS, obviously, and we're looking at the ins and outs. It's called From Beginner to Real World, and it covers a ton of SaaS stuff. Uh, we're looking at the basic stuff like mix-ins, variables, extends, operators. It goes into some of the more complicated things. We look at pre-built functions. We look at creating our own functions. We look at making loops and if statements and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and not only are we looking at all of the functionality of SAS, but I also challenge you. So it's like, here's how this works. Now here's a different problem. Can you solve it with what we just learned? So I have like challenges like that uh, to make sure you're actually learning how these things are working and not just following along with me. And we build out actual projects. So it's nice to learn what it is, but also to learn how to incorporate it into projects you'll be working on. So we do all of that. So if you'd like to learn more about the course, just head over to my website, kevinpowell.co slash SAS course. Uh, there is a link to it in the description below as well. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know, leave a comment down below, or you could also come over to the community. So if you didn't know yet, I've been talking about this a lot. I have launched the community. It's a Discord channel. You can come and join us over there. Don't just have to talk about the course though. You can talk about anything you want. A bunch of devs, we're over 200 people there now having lots of fun, lots of good discussions. You can get help from me, get help from other people, uh, or just come and hang out, whatever you want. And if you do join the course, there is also a private channel inside the community where you can just ask specific questions to me and others um, about SaaS related stuff too. So I hope I do see you in the course. I hope you decide to join. A little reminder, the price does go up starting February 1st. So think about joining before then if you're going to join, but if you're not gonna join, that's 100% cool. Don't feel any pressure. Um, I'm gonna be here teaching some SaaS stuff anyway. And we'll be doing our regular coding stuff. I'm not going to be all of a sudden just focusing on this all the time. I want to talk about a bit about SaaS because the course is launched now, but scheduling is going to resume into exactly what I've been doing here all the time afterwards. And come and join us at the community. I won't, you know, if you're not already there, come please and hang out with us because it's cool and fun over there. So uh, come join the party there. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, a massive thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here. So thank you so much, guys. And of course, an extra special shout out to Lauren, who's my supporter of awesome, because just thank you for your super generous contribution. It is super amazing of you. This Friday will be the return of 5-Minute Fridays, probably not on a permanent basis, but they'll be coming every now and then for the next little while. So you can look forward to that. It will be on SAS again. And until then, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.